things happen the way they're supposed to. Now, I have Nikki Thompson in the studio with me, and we're talking about uh, something that Nikki lives with, and that is lipedema and lymphedema. And we've spoken about the non-diagnosis of this, this disease, which, you know, a lot of women out there, and it affects women mostly, uh, are living with and they don't know what to do and they keep getting told to lose weight, go on a diet, do this, do that. But it's not about that. It's about something completely different. So Nikki's going to talk a little bit more about how she worked through that process and is now working with women who, who uh, realise or don't realise that they are living with this lipedema and lymphedema and helping them move forward in their life and making them feel better about who they are so that they, they don't feel judged all the time. Is that right, Nikki? At the moment, I'm spending more time on their physical symptoms right. um, and I hope to do more work with their emotional and mindset state um, in programs in the future. But I'm often having women coming to me now um, because I'm starting to put out a bit more information about large legs and do you have large legs and are they heavy and you know, do you struggle with it? The women, a lot of the women I have coming have got large le larger legs. They don't know what's wrong with them. So I will go through a series of questions and a conversation with them and I know pretty much that they've got it but I'm not able to diagnose them. Um, that's out of my scope of practice. I'm a, Do you recommend someone they could go and see? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, there's a great physio that I go to periodically um, and she's able to diagnose and there are other people I can send, you know, the surgeon I go to. Um, but often it's enough for them to, you know, have a, a, an inkling. You know, if I say, I think you might have it, that might be enough for them to... Want to go and find, do some more research yeah, and or, find out. or some of them won't find out anymore, but they will follow some recommendations. Mm -hmm. You know, I might send them off and say they need to get into some compression garments to help support their lymphatic system. Um, I have a pneumatic pump that they might, I might recommend that they go and buy one if they're particularly bad. Um... Or and if the pneumatic bad. pump, what's that do? It helps with the lymphatic drainage? It does. It, it moves the lymphatic fluid. So I, I do a specific massage sequence on people now, um, which is beautiful. You open up the chest area. Um, in fact, I've brought the gloves I use, if that's all right. Yeah. So um, okay. these gloves uh, um, have a spiky side to them, um, and then they have a magnetic side. Ooh. So I, um, wow. I use these on the body and open up the lymphatic channels before I start massaging them. Right, okay. Um, they're actually <coughs> pretty comfortable to, to work with, actually, because it moulds into the shape of your hand so that it can move across their body really well. Yeah. These are an older pair. These are mine that I use, so they're quite soft now. But when a client comes... If they decide to buy them, um, they're very spiky. So you can literally just touch um, your chest area. So I do a specific That's sequence right. using the gloves, using beautiful creams to stimulate the lymphatic system. Okay, keep and um, I do it in combination with stroking with my hands as well. Right. So and what's that like when someone makes an appointment to come and see you and they walk in the door what do you see when you first see them? What do you feel when you first see them? It takes me back to me. It takes me back to often how I felt, and I'll see it in their body language, um, you know, the way they walk in and, and that, that, that struggle to get down and put their shoes, take their shoes off even, um, or get on the table. Fortunately, I've got a fantastic massage table that um, is electric, so and it can cater for larger 
um, weight. Right. So we don't have any problem with that, um, and I can get it down low. So they literally just sort of sit on it, sit on it, and then and lie down. Um, for me, it's a privilege to have people come. I've I never take it for granted, and and now that I've got these women who are often a mirror of myself, um, there's a, a, a there's an empathy for them. You know, there's no judgment. There's no often these women wouldn't have gone and got um, body work or massage mm. because of their size. They're, they're embarrassed mm. or they just don't. Yeah, they don't want to be exposed. Yeah. Um, and I, I have a bit of a laugh with them and just say, look, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Look at me. Um, and, yeah, we try and break down the barriers so that it's it's a safe place for them to be. And that and that's the important thing, isn't it, that you provide that place, that environment that is safe. And I know that you have a beautiful place for them. Mm. And there's so much that you have there to offer them and to to bring them in when they're feeling not good about themselves and allowing them to walk out the door feeling a little bit better mm. and as they come back that grows so that they can then think okay well this isn't my fault I can now start living my life without feeling that guilt yeah it's about empowering them and um yeah I use magic's phrase it's not your fault you yeah. know you didn't do this to yourself it is, you know, it's happened, but let's work on getting the best outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I have to look back to, sometimes I, I forget where I've come from too, and I've still got a long way on the journey to go. But, um, yeah, from four years ago, there's been a massive growth um, emotionally and mentally and physically. There's been changes. Um, but I have to sometimes go back to, that place to, to put realize. myself in the, the shoes of that client walking in the door. Yeah. Um, and to realize, you know, how far you've actually come to, to have more confidence and to not have that guilt and not have that weight of low self-esteem and lack of confidence and worrying about what people are going to say about you because that's humans for you. Mm. They will judge you regardless. doesn't matter what you look like, whether you're a larger woman or whether you're a really skinny woman mm. or what you are in between. Someone is going to judge you for something somewhere along the line. And I think, you know, and I've known you now for quite a while, mm. Nikki, and I've watched your, watched your growth. I've watched you go through the process mm. of where you are today. And I'll watch where you are going because it is a journey, isn't it? Sure is. And if you can support other women on that journey, that's a really important part of their life as well. Yeah. To take them from that place of uncertainty into a place of certainty. And I don't say that lightly. Certainty is that they know that they have a condition that they know it can be treated to a certain level. They know that they can feel better about themselves and, and they can do something about it with their body mm. through operations at the moment, surgeries, but maybe down the track, hopefully there are scientists out there doing some research on the genetics of this, this lymphedema and lymphedema so that they can find something that will prevent it in younger people. Oh, be amazing. Because, you know, if you can prevent it or slow the process down, mm. there may be in that in that time period there may be something else that catching up. Will yeah, catch up and mm. slow the process down even more for those who are susceptible to to the disease. Mm. I think the other thing is when when I'm working with women, it's they need to know one that it's not their fault, but two that they're not. They don't need to be their diagnosis. No, they don't need to be all of that. They they can be so much more. And there was a conference that I um, attended virtually uh, because flying on planes is not great for me at the moment. It 
builds up the fluid. I mean, anyone flying on a plane gets a bit of swelling. I get masses of swelling. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to do this conference virtually. And uh, there was a woman in America who set up a, a Facebook site. I think it's called Lipedema Fitness. And she's a very large lady. And she just started um, doing exercise on a kitchen bench. And um, it's got a great following and she's now organized uh, um, a, like a triathlon. Oh, really? For ladies with lipedema. Wow. So it's all sort of different distances and I don't know the full extent, but it's these women getting out there despite their size and shape and just rocking it. And it's... You know, maybe I can organise something like that here. I don't know. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah. That, that would be fabulous. And having a conversation with her to really get where she's come from to why she started it, because she's a bigger woman. And, and you know, working with other people to make themselves, make them feel good is so important mm. because there's so much negativity going on in the world that we need positive. Mm. We want positive, we need it, and we deserve to have positive in our life. Yep. And I think that people have to stop judging. And I mean, in Australia, you've got this thing called the tall poppy syndrome. I sure do. And it's like, hey, you know, I'll pull you down if you, you know, you think you're better than me or whatever. Whoop you do. I think success is fabulous and I love to see people successful so I'm I'm backing you to uh, to be able to show these women another side of life that they haven't seen well one of my um passions was always traveling yes I I spent in my early 20s almost three years away traveling and working abroad and loved it, loved going to different cultures, loved you know, different foods, loved experiencing life somewhere else. And that's one thing that uh, in the last couple of decades I haven't really done much of. I've, I've had little, little escapes um, with my husband and conferences where you sit around a pool, but that's not travel to me. Mm. Um, so one of my big hairy goals is to actually have retreats and travel experiences for... Go to Italy. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Anywhere. It would be wonderful. And cater for women who might not do that. Um, or not have the opportunity or not feel comfortable actually yeah. doing that. Yeah. And if you're, you know, it's almost safety in numbers. You know, if there's 20 larger women, then you're not going to be noticing, you know, and you could actually start a movement. I mean, you could start a movement. Um, you could find someone who's a seamstress that could make some fabulous clothes for these women. You know, not just tees and that sort of thing, but some fabulous clothes which give you that that feeling of, I don't know, feeling of... Being alive again. Being alive yeah. again and, and feeling, oh... God, I look good, regardless yeah. of what size I yeah. am. There's a woman in um, uh, Queensland somewhere who runs a, um, a bathing shop and she fits bathers to people, irrespective of your size. Right. Um, and then she also runs some sort of challenge each year where people can come and they get their bathers on and they have a photo shoot. Oh, really? Yeah, I think That's it's called fabulous. Sands and Sequins or something. But um, really exciting, That's really fabulous. exciting program, yeah. Oh, look, you know, it, it's the more you talk about it, the more the more opportunity there is out there for for women who are living with lipedema. Mm. And I just I also want to note that lipedema, I think I said it earlier, it, it, you don't have to be large to have it. Mm. There are women who are size 10, but they've got a disproportionate upper and body, upper body and lower body, and they get diagnosed with it. You know, they, they'll have sort of slightly bigger legs, and their their experience is not to be dismissed either. Mm. You know, it's mm. uh, it's very real for them and painful and all the rest of it. Um, and it, there are stages and there are 
types within a stage. So it, it can be quite aggressive and, and um, debilitating. Mm. And so what happens is you tend to hibernate, don't you? And not go anywhere or not do anything. And, you know, if you had friends, those friends drop off and you're kind of more in isolation, aren't you? Oh, look, my friends have been very supportive, irrespective of my size. But my personal thing was, you know, you would go say, to a restaurant and you'd be looking at the chair and going, okay, can I fit in that chair? Or am I going to break that chair? Or go to the movie cinemas and you go, mm, okay, that's a bit snug there. Um, or the aeroplane. You know, the planes were horrible because they're so small when you're, you've are you got bigger hips and thighs um, and you have to get a seatbelt extension and all of those things go through your mind. You're making all those little micro adjustments before you actually get out the door. Yeah. And um, I remember after my first surgery going into my second one and I went in for the, the pre-op um, with the, the nurse and my arms were so large I couldn't get um, a normal um, blood pressure meter cuff around my arms and, and get the reading properly. I remember saying to the nurse as she went to put it on, I said, oh, no, 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 you have to go and get a large cuff. It doesn't fit. And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. And, and I said, well, you know, it just doesn't fit around my arm. And she looked at me and this was a big aha for me, I guess. She said, darling, you've got tiny arms now. They're normal. They're, they're not big. And I looked at my arms and it was the first time I kind of went, oh, my God. And, you know, there were tears and, you know, it's a very, oh, I'll go again. <laughs> it's a very emotional thing when you, you realise what you've, that dysfunction or that you've lived with and all of a sudden that's not an issue anymore. Mm. Um, but it, it, I still kind of look at chairs and go, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, and what's that like when you go into a restaurant or you go into a movie theatre? Do you find a chair? that is comfortable? Often they're not comfortable at all. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the, uh, thank goodness for gold class and things like that, where the seats are wider, mm -hmm. but in some movie cinemas, they're a, a reasonable size and some are really tiny, tiny pretty tiny. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, it can be a very uncomfortable experience. A very uncomfortable. Because you're pushing in on the sides of your legs. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, um, not much fun, is it? Not much fun when you're doing that. 